So are tech companies deploying enough cash to create jobs right now? I think it's hard to generalize. Some, some are, some aren't. Uh, I think in, in general, people are a little risk averse trying to figure out where the economy is going and what's going to happen in terms of, of politics and regulation and tax policy and, and things like that. You know, thankfully, and it's like a conference like this, the Founders Forum, there's a tremendous enthusiasm among not just the, the big companies, but the young companies who want to someday be big companies. And I think that's where we need to you know, focus our, our attention because ultimately they are the, the real job creators. Well, that was Steve Case speaking with me at the Founders Forum gathering at the New York Historical Society yesterday. For more on the jobs picture, I'm joined now by Roger Altman again. He's the Evercore Partners chairman and founder. And Roger, great to have you back on nice the loop, here, Betty. particularly on a big markets day yeah. like this. And, you know, I talked with Steve also, by the way, about Facebook and about the valuation in the IPO. And, and before we get to jobs, I'm just curious if you would buy into a company like Facebook. Well, who isn't impressed with Facebook? I mean, it's a phenomenon. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's an astounding company. Uh, I'd have to look more closely at the valuation and uh, the S1 to know whether, you know. It's worth buying it, into. It, yeah, and, and, and obviously get a sense of the pricing, which I don't have right now. But I mean, I'm, I'm hugely impressed with Facebook, uh, both as a business and some of the, you know, some of the social awareness things they're doing. I don't know if you know this, but they just decided to put uh, organ donor yes. status yep. on Facebook. That's uh, a very important thing. Uh, I happen to be a transplant recipient. Tr oh, really? And, and so, uh, believe me, that's a, that's a very important thing which could be transformational. Wow, I didn't know that, Roger. Um, uh, and certainly, yeah, they announced that, I think, earlier, earlier this days week. Ago. Or, yeah, yeah, a few days ago. Uh, but Facebook is more than just, as you're pointing out, more than just a tech story. It is a mm -hmm. business story. It is a social phenomenon. Right. For the market itself, to have an IPO this big, uh, is it a stabilizer in some ways for the markets? Does it instill more confidence, if you can look at the larger picture there? I think if the offering, which is, as you say, uh, ginormous, uh, <laughs> uh, goes well, and, and I'm sure that it will because there's so much at stake that it almost has to, uh, I think at the margin it's a stabilizing uh, and encouraging factor. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have to see exactly how well it goes and, and, and so forth. Often. Uh, it's very difficult to price offerings like this when you have the type of uh, enormous demand I would expect for this offering. Mm -hmm. it, it, to price it in a way that it trades uh, in a stable fashion right after the pricing rather than leaps up and then quickly trends down, uh, it's quite a tough job for the, for the managing underwriters. Okay, well, talking about market reactions and what we might see at 8.30 with the jobs report, uh, if we see something that's surprising to the, to the downside, uh, does this mean that this economy is, is you know, perhaps could be slipping back, maybe not recession, but certainly into something a lot worse than what we thought a few months ago? Well, first, Betty, I don't think there's uh, almost any chance that we're going to slip back into negative territory. I think the, uh, the recovery, however f uh, weak it is, is on a pretty firm footing as compared to going negative. Uh, but in, a, in the bigger picture, the most noteworthy thing about the entire recovery is just how weak it has been. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's the weakest recovery since the 30s, uh, and, and, I, and I like to think of it as though every facet of the Rogart, Rogoff, Reinhardt thesis is is playing out right on cue. In other words, this is such a weak recovery because it was caused by a financial collapse, the credit market collapse of late 2008. Uh, and not a business cycle oriented uh, uh, recession. And not recovery. a tech bust. Not well, it's, it's just not, it's, this, 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 this recession was not caused by traditional business cycle factors and therefore the type of V-shaped or U-shaped recovery that one has always seen in the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years is not being seen now because of the, of the causes and, and all that res research shows us that the aftermath of such financial crisis induced recoveries mm -hmm. is is very long, very slow, and, and painfully, uh, uh, painfully weak. And that's what we're seeing. So uh, in the figure for the first quarter, uh, growth, 2.2%. By any historical standard, that's a very poor figure. Uh, and you expect that to continue through the rest of this year? Well, the consensus, your consensus, Bloomberg, the 72 economists you serve by every quarter, uh, indicates a 2.4% real growth rate for the year. That is not a particularly healthy growth rate either. But that sounds right to you? It does. Okay. It does sound, sound about right to me. Uh, but again, it, it's all in the backdrop of a relatively slow 
painful recovery. But let me get to Roger first uh, on this. And I think Mike explained it, and Peter as well, but explained it very well with this labor report, Roger, which is that, look, you know, it shows that this economy is, you know, struggling along, but it's not decisive enough. It's not decisive to say this economy is going to take off the rest of the year, and it's not decisive enough to say that this economy is really falling, that we need some policy action. Well, Betty, I think it's a, a pretty disappointing number. Uh, if you widen out the lens, uh, uh, we need uh, 200 to 250,000 jobs uh, to really make this or to illustrate that this is uh, a healthy and, and strongish recovery. We're nowhere near that. Uh, this number, uh, in contrast, confirms the idea of a, a bit of a pause in the recovery. It's consistent with the 2.2% the weak 2.2 percent uh, real GDP number we saw for the first quarter. Right. Uh, I also don't think that the unemployment rate is a particularly uh, good measure right now of the health of labor markets. I think you have to look again more widely at the labor participation rate and the employment to population ratio. Both of those have recovered far less, almost uh, very little actually, than the uh, unemployment rate. And so of course, the unemployment rate is going to fall if the workforce shrinks, but that's not a good measure of the health of labor markets, which remain profoundly weak. We lost 8.8 .8 million jobs since the onset of the recession. Uh, we've only gained back about 3 million of those. Yeah. So uh, uh, this isn't the number that anyone would want to see. Sure, there are a few uh, bright spots, uh, uh, but they're few and far between. Okay, uh, Roger, uh, could this economy, if it stays like this, if the jobs market stays like this, could this be what costs President Obama re-election? Well, Betty, uh, <clears throat> I'm not a political operative, but in my experience, uh, the trajectory uh, of the economy is more important going into an election than the absolute levels. Uh, we saw that particularly in 1984 with President Reagan's re-election, when the unemployment rate was still high, I believe 7.6 percent on election day, but it had improved so much that the electorate thought it was, quote, morning in America unquote, as the Reagan campaign then said. Mm -hmm. So the trajectory is uh, slightly helpful to the president because we have had consistent job creation, even though it's been weak. Uh, the unemployment rate in particular, of course, has come down from 9.7 to this 8% figure. Yep. Uh, and the, of course, if you're in the White House, you're going to uh, make a lot of hay out about uh, on that improvement in the unemployment rate. Uh, the, of course, today's number will be seen by most of the experts and by the press as a, as a weak number. So you'll have a tug of war between uh, but uh, the White House message, which will be we're on track, uh, we have a long way to go, but we're doing the right thing, stay the course, and those who say uh, it's not enough. Roger, should there be more done, though? I mean, should the Democrats and should the president be more forceful, as, as Peter was describing, more policy action coming out on jobs? Well, that's a question really of rhetoric rather than actual action, because it isn't possible to do anything meaningful at this late point in this presidential election year. It's not possible to pass any new additional stimulus, for example, which is what the macroeconomists might argue uh, would work or should, should be done. Uh, so the, the battle will be uh, rhetorical rather than over action. There'll be some debate about whether the Federal Reserve uh, might uh, uh, unleashed QE3 or some additional monetary stimulus. I doubt that, yeah. but I think there'll be debate about it. But as far as uh, what the executive branch can do or, or, and the Congress can do, it's too late. Mike. Uh, Betty, I've got some interesting news here on that subject, though. Our chief numbers cruncher, Alexander Tanzi, put pencil to paper. From the start of his term, President Obama can now claim that he has created jobs. The jobs number has finally turned positive. From the start of Obama's term, he's now created 152 thousand jobs. Now, we lost five million during the recession, so it may be a small point, but it might be something that he can hold up. Okay, a net, net positive then, uh, a positive job creation under President Obama. Mike, uh, thanks for that. But Roger, just, uh, just to get back to your point, though, on uh, policy and policy action, though, uh, the fact that we've seen equity futures sort of take a tumble, come back, they were in the green, and now they're sort of flattish at this point. They're a little bit more negative. Does that tell you, though, that the markets are expecting some policy action? They are expecting the Fed to step in? I know that there are some in the markets uh, who do think so. Uh, I don't know, what, Betty, whether that's a majority or not. I have no way of knowing that. Uh, I, I doubt it. I strongly doubt it. Uh, Why do you doubt it? Because I think the Fed uh, has really fired all of its 
effective weapons. And I also think that the view inside the Fed is to that effect. Uh, and uh, after all, the Fed has taken uh, a lot of heat from various quarters, which is which is very uh, which is not used to taking. Mm. And uh, it would it would be very surprising to me if we saw additional monetary stimulus. But I could be wrong, and I know there are people in the market who think it's possible. Okay, Roger, thank you so much for joining us and staying with us uh, through these jobs numbers. Uh, that was Roger Altman with Evercore Partners.